You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey everyone, we are back with part two of our Cabral host calls. Yesterday, we got to answer so many questions that came in from the community. Really a great show there. Had a lot of fun being able to answer all sorts of questions. We got some veterinarian questions about dogs, uh, dog health as well, and a potential pet line that we're looking into. We spoke about allergies and basically reintroduction programs, talked about avascular necrosis of the hip, basically hip replacements and all the issues that go along with that, spoke about dizziness, vestibular-based disorders, talked about exercising, lower back base pain, let's see what else, or I should say abdominal pain, so many great questions. So definitely tune back into that. That was episode 1107. I hope you check that out, stephencabral.com forward slash 1107. Now, today's show will be 1108, and we're going to answer more of our questions. So what we do here, if you're new to the Cabral house calls on the weekend, is all the questions come in, and I answer them in the order they've come in. Now, we've answered thousands of questions on the Cabral Concept Podcast, and it's a service, I guess you could call it, that I love to provide, because I know... And the, well, to be honest, the reason why I started to scale back a little bit of my private practice, or I should say a lot of my private practice, is that my team and I were seeing 20,000 people a year, many, many years, many, many, many years. And it was great. And I loved it. And my, again, I still have a huge team. But the problem was that I was reaching, I was seeing about 2,000 people per year. And so, you know, that was great and absolutely loved it. And, and I still still peop- see people to this day, don't get me wrong. But the problem was, I said to myself, what if I could, instead of reaching 20,000 people a year, what if I could reach 20,000 people a day? And I had no idea how I would do that. But I had started listening to podcasts about three years ago. And I said, I really like the medium. I enjoy speaking. I used to do hundreds of videos for people. I've written thousands of articles for magazines, every magazine that you could possibly think of on health, wrote for Condé Nast, wrote for self.com, wrote for nutrition data for many years. So, you know, again, I, I love doing that. love being able to get the word out, but I never knew how to do it at scale until I figured out podcasting. And so I was new and I simply said, this seems like something I could get into and get behind. So excited that we now, I can say, reach over 20,000 people a day It's one of my favorite things to do. And in the future, we're also going to create a whole media company out of this. I want to do video. And so we'll have a whole um, YouTube and video-based channel. We'll create an online TV show. Super excited about that. But uh, essentially what I'm trying to say is none of this happens without you. So really do thank you for tuning into the Cabral Concept. And it's also one of the reasons why I have an immense amount of gratitude. And it's why I want to be able to reach out and answer these questions on the weekend. Be able to give people at least a place to get started because we all need another opinion. We all need what is an alternative to what I'm currently doing right now. So I'm happy to provide that. And again, just appreciate you and all of your shares, all of your reviews on iTunes or whatever podcast listener you're listening to mean the world to me. So the more you can share the show, the more you can review the show, the just overall, it begins to grow. And it's all about the message. It really is. And to this day, we don't take on outside sponsors. Maybe we will in the future because I have a huge team now and that team, everybody expects to be paid, you know, of course, right? That's how the world works. So maybe in the future, but for right now, we're just going to keep on keeping on. And uh, again, thank you very much. Okay. So let's go move on to our first question today, which is from Sylvia. Sylvia's asking, Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've been hearing a lot about glyconutrients. What are your thoughts about them? Have you done any research in that field? Thank you, Sylvia. 
All right. Thanks, Sylvia, for writing in. And yes, I'm familiar with glyconutrients. We don't use them specifically in our practice. And I'll tell you why. So glyconutrients actually have some decent research behind them, not for long-term use, but it looks like anywhere between six to eight weeks, seven weeks being typically what's called the max. And what happens is this. The reason they believe that they're getting good results with allergies and asthma and inflammatory-based conditions is, or attention deficit, is because they're feeding and promoting good bacterial growth. So that's why I always say, can we go deeper on this? That's always the question that I ask. How much deeper can we get? And from me, I say, okay, well, if there's some improvement being seen from improving the microbiome, my goal is to look at why it's imbalanced in the first place. So that is why I run the organic acids test and then the stool test and the food sensitivity test in that order. If people can run all three, fantastic. I would rather figure out what the imbalance is seal up that gut wall, not just give it prebiotic-based nutrients or other sugars that feed the bacteria, but actually figure out what is wrong, remove those toxins, if any, such as H. pylori, parasites, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or candida, and then I repopulate the gut. That is our candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. Works amazingly well. I love lab testing first, and then I go in from there. And then we use natural prebiotics rather than glyconutrient formulas. So it's how we choose to practice. We get great results with it. I believe it's a more natural approach, but I want you to do what you feel is right for you. All right. Oliver's up next. Hello, my name is Oliver. I'm making a contact on behalf of my daughter, Kyra, who's a sophomore. I don't want to mention the college. I'm just going to put at college because the college... Uh, might give away who this person is. She's been struggling with constipation and related digestive issues. She's had acne and taken Accutane for two years. This past summer, she did a digestive detox type program by the end of summer in August. She started with an acne-like outbreak around the same time. She started complaining about brain fog. She did take an antibiotic treatment when her outbreak was deemed to not to be acne. The outbreak has continued and she has brain fog. She's been working to another, she's been going to another center in Boston. I'm not going to name the center. Let me just, I'm going to take out the first word and just saying going to a healing center in Boston. But the remedies circled around controlling her digestion with varied success. So it was recommended she contact you for a holistic view of all these issues. Well, I appreciate that they recommended me. We get a lot of recommendations and super grateful for that. So here's the thing. This came in on November 27th. And it's now, what, the second week of February. So I apologize. Uh, Again, it says on the page when you write in, they won't be answered for about 10 to 12 weeks. Always do feel free to email into us or um, ask at cabralsupportgroup.com, whatever works for you. Honestly, if you're looking to apply to the practice, probably the easiest thing to do is just email support at stephencabral.com. It's Stephen with a PH. And we'll be able to direct you from there and just send you the link. Or on all the show notes pages. Honestly, if you just go to steamcabral.com forward slash 1108 for today, it will say how to apply to the private practice. So we're happy to help. You can do a bunch of different things. You don't have to work with us in private practice. You could order the organic acids test and stool test, as well as the IgG food sensitivity test to get started. You could even just do the first two of those. I read those labs, then you get a call with my one of my great health coaches, and they take you through the protocols, they take you through the recommendations. That's a less expensive way to work, so you're certainly welcome to do that as well. All those labs can be found at their discounted pricing at equilibriumnutrition.com. So feel free to check that out as well. We'd be happy to help. I mean, for sure, this is what we specialize in is digestion, hormones, all that great stuff, so we can certainly help with that as well. And, and of course, we, we'd love to help. Christine's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. Dr. Ball, that's me. I've been suffering from inflammation, redness, burning sensation, recession, throbbing, and bleeding sensitivity of my gums, as well as bone loss in my jaw for the last two to three years. I have been to periodontists, dentists, doctors, and naturopaths with no real relief. Info about me, Vata body type, 5'11", 135, cold hands and feet, stressed, using birth control, IUD, floaters in my eyes, hair loss, hypothyroid. Let's see what else. We can't read the lab tests on here, but glad to find that you included them. Vertical lines of the nails, TMJ. I was on a low-carb diet for six months with no fruit. Um, with a naturopath, I have very good oral hygiene, exposed to heavy metals, went to Mexico, got sick about two years ago, the gum, the burning, the recession, bone loss are my main concern. Started the detox, 
Apostle Parasite, hormonal balance, not sure what to do. Love your podcast. Thanks so much for what you do. Your podcasts are very informative, Christine. Thanks, Christine. We appreciate that. So, you know, here's the problem, though, is that I don't actually believe that putting someone on a super low-carb diet for six months and no food is a naturopathic thing to do. It's really not, to be honest, because in my... Now, there's different types of naturopaths, but in my opinion, a naturopathic doctor is looking to create balance in the body. So we know that you're sick. We know that you have disease of the body because of an imbalance. So we don't know what the imbalance is yet until we run those labs. You ran your thyroid panel, which is great. You know, no doubt about it. I think it's fantastic. If you were to run only two labs with us, it would be the starter kit. That's because it's, it's also discounted at least $100. Or it might be even be 200 but it's the organic acids test and the hair tissue mineral analysis. I do agree, agree with your consensus. consensus. You have digestive-based issues and you have high vata-based issues. So you're more catabolic. Your body's absolutely breaking down. You can see that with your gums as well. So most likely, we're going to need to look at what your B vitamin levels are at and your vitamin C levels are at on that organic acids test. The hair tissue mineral analysis will show me what minerals you're deficient in as well as possible heavy metal toxicity. Now, if you could run the big five tests, that would be amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing, of course, because it'd be more data. So I'd love that. But let me put them in order of importance for me to get for you to do. So it would be the organic acids test. It would be the hair tissue mineral analysis. Then it would be the thyroid adrenal hormone or just the adrenal hormone if you don't want to run the thyroid. And then I would run the omega-3 test. I would actually run the stool test before I would run the food sensitivity test because there's so much data that we can gather before that. So that's what I would do. And then you'll get my exact recommendations for what to do. For someone that's dealing with as much and many issues as you, I know there's a lot of deficiencies. I want to see what they are. And of course, there's some type of toxicity. Uh, We don't know if it's parasites until we do the stool test or candida until we do the organic acids test. So that's what I would do. And then we'll have a much more comprehensive plan we can give to you. All right. Joseph's up next. Joseph's writing in. Just started listening to the podcast. We'd like to inquire what you think the best option would be to deal with eosinophilic esophagitis. I've had allergy tests done. I avoid soy, gluten, milk. Nothing works. Wondering if it could be parasites. To be honest, I'm at a loss. I'm considering doing an elemental diet so I don't have to worry anymore. Okay, Joseph, you are in luck. On episode 1023, we did a whole show about eosinophilic esophagitis. So um, check that out. For those that don't know what it is, it's basically inflammation of the esophagus. And yes, it can be caused by food sensitivities. Remember to run the IgG first. And then without a doubt, you've heard it previous, run the organic acids test, run the stool test. Let's figure out if there's H. pylori. That's possibly an issue. Let's figure out if there's candida overgrowth, which yes, can grow into the esophagus. Or it could be immune imbalance because of leaky gut-based issues, meaning could have high levels of cytokines and inflammatory issues such as histamines. So we'll look at that as well. So check out 1023. And then without a doubt, my first step for you would be to run the organic acids test and the stool test. Okay. Chloe's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. Me again. Curious about bioresonance therapy. There is a guy in Perth, which is Western Australia, that uses frequency work to overcome disease symptoms. I have a friend who claims she got rid of her candida with this method. It kind of seems too good to be true. Would love to know your thoughts. All right. Thanks for writing in, Chloe. Appreciate it. For those who don't know what bioresonance therapy is, most practitioners, they put electrodes on the skin. And the electrodes conduct energy wavelengths of basically low-level frequency that can enable the immune system to produce more or less immune cells. Uh, They can begin to balance inflammatory cytokines that we spoke about before, and they could kill uh, pathogens. So, you know, my theory is this. I will do whatever works. That's the truth. So here's the real truth. I believe that energy-based medicine will eventually be a bigger part of the future of medicine. I really believe that. But we don't have replicable studies of a lot of these energy-based medicines to be able to say, yes, this works, and it works for all of these people with this particular condition. 
So that's what I look at. You know, I always look at what can we do that can be replicated. So in my practice, for the most part, people have already seen a dozen, two dozen, three dozen other doctors and specialists. Our job is not to guess anymore. So here's what we do. I don't practice bioresonance therapy, but I'm not against it. What I would say is use it as an adjunct to a holistic program that's working at the root cause of what's going on. So for example, we recommend acupuncture. We recommend massage. We recommend personal training. We recommend a lot of other things. But we wouldn't say, let's do acupuncture to get rid of parasites. Let's do acupuncture to get rid of candida overgrowth. I like those. But we don't do acupuncture to get rid of leaky gut. Again, they can be great add-ons to help with those things. But what I do is I say, if there's candida overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth or parasites or H. pylori or leaky gut or heavy metals, we remove them. That's our job. We know they're there. Let's remove them. We know how. We know the herbs that we've been given, the biofilms that we've been given for thousands of years, biofilm disruptors. We use those. We know it works. Let's do what we know can be replicated over and over and over and over, right? And then if your friend or you're interested in doing the other adjuncts, do them. I'm not against them. I'm not against them at all. A lot of people like don't know this about me, but I got certified as a yoga instructor 15 years ago or so. I got certified as a Reiki instructor. I don't practice that, nor do I practice as a yoga instructor, but I got that over a decade ago. Why? I wanted to learn more about it. Okay. I love cranial sacral therapy. I love foot reflexology. I love marma point therapy. I do acupuncture myself. So it's not that I don't believe in these things, but when someone is suffering, I want to run the lab. I want to figure out what's going on. Then I want to work on that from a natural perspective. So that's what I do. It doesn't mean it's the only way, but what I can tell you is this, this way works. You use the best of the state of the art medicine. You find out what's wrong so you can pinpoint it. Then you don't waste your time or energy or money. You put your money, you put your energy, you put your time towards what you know exactly is wrong with your body. And again, that's just how I choose, choose to work. And I've never seen anything work better. If there was, believe me, I'd be doing it because why not, right? I mean, you can choose to practice any way you want. I choose to be integrative and, and practice the best of everything. So as we can replicate this more in the future, you better believe I'll be talking about it more in the future because I do believe in it. I just can't replicate it yet. It's why I don't do homeopathy either. You can't replicate homeopathy in every case. And I know that there are people out there going to be saying, yes, you can believe. I can't begin to tell you the amount of homeopathy study that I've done and the amount of questions that were on actually my board exam too. I know it inside and out and I love it, but we can't replicate it in the same way that we can with other forms of medicine. Maybe we could in the early 1900s, right? When it, when it, when it was really in its heyday and there, it looked like it was working great. Things maybe have changed. Maybe it's the EMFs in the environment and maybe it's the bacterial-based change in our gut from all the plastics and everything else that's disrupting it. Maybe it's the amount of toxins we're exposed to now. Maybe it's the overall environmental energy, but something is different and we can't replicate it as well anymore. And I could tell you that over many, many of my colleagues as well. So anyway, I want to keep it at that. I know that's controversial, but it's okay. I don't choose to be controversial, but I always try to speak my truth. Let's get in um, at least one more question. Sammy's up next. Dr. Brawl, love your podcast. Have a few questions related to the kiddos and would love to talk more on kids in general. My first question is, what do you recommend for a teething baby? I'm trying to avoid Tylenol ibuprofen, but for sleepless nights, what's the best? Also, in regards to kids' snacks, I know fruits, veggies are always best, but what are the options around other kids if they want what the other kids have or when fruit and veggies aren't an option, what do you suggest? Any dry snacks your kids ate that are still relatively healthy? For snacks, I do often find in gluten-free and organic, so if I had to choose one, which is more important? Lastly, my daughter has a severe allergy, not an intolerance or sensitivity, and I'm looking for good plant-based milk for her. What do you suggest? Thanks a million for your help and for sharing your vast wealth of knowledge. Sammy. All right. Thank you for writing in. And the world literally is a funny place. So just as I was talking about how I don't use homeopathy in my practice, we come to a couple of cases where I do. So I, I use a, a couple of the different methodologies, one's for cold and flu-based symptoms, and the other is for teething children. Highlands and a few other brands actually make a children's teething tablet that we've used with my two young girls 
It has magnesium in it that helps uh, Kelmag that helps with the with the soothing of the nervous system as well. A couple other things that we do homemade wise is we will soak a washcloth in uh, chamomile tea, and then what we'll do is we will um, give that frozen. That can be small. Again, you can use a tea bag. You can use whatever you'd like, but chamomile and chamomile will help those soothing uh, or to soothe those gums. Another great one, and you might really like this one because it's worked as well for us, use just a drop of clove oil mixed with a little coconut oil, and you rub it on your baby's gums, and that will help to soothe those gums as well. So hopefully you can start there. Those are great methodologies, which we use, the chamomile, the teething tablets, which are homeopathic, and and again, I love how the world uh, sometimes comes into being that way. And then also the clove oil, which is just great for toothaches for adults. And it's great for babies. You just have to dilute it a little bit. And um, you can use olive oil uh, or coconut oil. And uh, that works great. So another thing is just anything cold, like a applesauce, popsicle, or anything like that uh, will help to numb those gums as well. Okay, what else do you recommend? You said, okay, kid snacks. Sure, we do. I mean, obviously, I have two girls, four and six years old, Lots of parties, lots of snacks, all that good stuff. So what do they do? Okay, so we use the fruit and veggies. There's no doubt about that. Apple slices, pear slices, carrots, celery. We'll use uh, peppers, and they can dip it in hummus. So we do a lot of hummus or bean dips. We do guacamole. Our girls love avocado and guacamole. So they can dip that. They can dip it with, what else do they use? Some of the gluten-free chips or nut crackers, but I'm trying to think of the name of them right now. But... They're gluten-free varieties. They're made from like blue corn and some of them have quinoa. They'll do some of that with hummus. They can't just eat the chips, but they'll eat it with something good as like a vessel. So that would be if we're out and about and that's not too messy. What else can I think about that we've used in the car? We're developing some bars right now. So I have samples of those that are going to be school safe. Those won't be out, unfortunately, for about three months because it takes such a long process. It's so painful creating good quality nutritional supplements. Like literally, it's I want it done today. And they tell me three months. So anyway, that's where we're at. I, that's pretty much it. We don't do a lot of crazy snacks. We really don't. Seaweed snacks, that's another one. My girls have always been eating seaweed snacks, so they love that. I'll try to do a kid's show and on kid's foods. So why don't I do that? I'll give myself a little bit of time to think. I'll go back. I'll ask my wife, like, what do we give our kids? And so um, she'll have a lot more ideas on that as well. But there's a lot of healthy, like, fun things out there, too, that you can do for bars. that are gluten-free. So you asked me if I go for gluten-free or organic. Well, we do gluten-free um, in my family except, like, twice a week. And then they can eat something with gluten. A lot of times my wife might wake it, make it with, like, spelt flour. So it might be, like, spl- spelt sourdough or something like that. That's a lot more natural. Or every once in a while, we'll do a pasta. But we do rice pasta uh, for the girls sometimes. I know I'm not giving do a great job in this one. So I'll get back to you. In this one, I'll do a podcast on it. And the last one would be a nut milk that you asked. Okay. So, you know, if they have a dairy allergy, but it's not to nuts, this makes it really easy. So my girls... I like macadamia nut milk. That's one of my favorites. So they'll do mac nut milk, milkadamia. Uh, what else do I use? Coconut milk. So they'll do coconut milk as well. Uh, they like the mac nut milk more than the coconut milk, which they think is a little bit more sour. My wife does almond milk, so she prefers almond milk actually. And she gets super clean varieties of almond milk uh, that are made naturally around here. So they'll do almond milk, coconut milk, and mac nut milk. But there's so many varieties. There's oat milk. There's rice milk, which I don't do too much of, especially if you're eating rice-based varieties. There's cashew milk. There is hemp milk. So there's so many great brands. What I recommend is just trying a few, seeing the ones that work best for you. If you can find an organic vanilla, meaning like it's a non-GMO variety, that can be nice because they're also unsweetened. So you just get a little bit more taste to it. And they work great. So we mix them with the smoothies, smoothie bowls. And um, every once in a while, they'll just have a glass of it. But we typically don't give milk as a drinking based substance. So hopefully that was helpful. We're going to keep it at that for today for Q&A. Thank you so much to everyone that wrote in and also to everyone that came and listened. If this was helpful, please do feel free to always pass the episode along to anyone you believe it could help and be sure to tune back in for the start to our week, which always starts with our motivation and mindset Monday. So good to have you. Hopefully you tune into that show. Thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.